Over the course of the, the year, the two years, three years, I was a regular at Les's house, one, two, three times a week. Sometimes he would call just to come over talk, or he had a problem with something in the house and I'd help him fix it. Not that I was the biggest mechanic of appliance repair in the world, but I think he liked to have the company over the house. So he called me up one day, he said, Jimmy, come on over, I wanna show you something. So when I got to the house, he pulled out this guitar. I said, what the heck is this? He said, it's a fake Les Paul. It came from China or Japan. And there's a big, he said there was a big lawsuit about it because it was the design. Everything had the Les Paul design except the name. It had the trapezoid, but it didn't say Les Paul. He said, I love the guitar because of all the features. It's like my recording model, but there's extra ones here. There's an on-off switch, and there's a button here that acts as a preamp, and the battery in the back also acts as a preamp for the guitar. He said, I really like it. I took the idea to Gibson. They really didn't like it, so it kind of sits here. He goes, I want you to have it. I said, Les, come on. He said, put it under your bed for a rainy day. I said, but it's a fake. So he autographed it. He said, not anymore. He goes, wait a minute. I'll do one better. So he looked through his junk drawer. And this drawer was at the kitchen counter. And it had everything from files to tape to scissors to soldering guns. He's like, I'm looking for something. So he pulled out this clear Les Paul sticker. And he said, get me a sponge. And he said, I never mind. So Les licked his hand wiped this white sticker on the back, got it wet, and he stuck it on the back, and he handed it to me, and he said, Jimmy, you have the world's first Les Paul approved fake Les Paul. <laughs> and so that's, I, we got a kick out of it, we laughed, but when you play it, it sounds pretty good. <laughs>